Good day, Grade 12s. Welcome to this next lesson in electricity. In this lesson, we're just going to carry on with what we were doing. And we had just started talking about resistance. Now, if you recall, I said to you that I was going to be revising um, all the electricity that you needed to know. So I'm going to go through this. It doesn't actually come up that often that they ask you about the factors that affect the resistance and why, but I have seen it on some metric papers. So I think it is very good to remind you of what that is. Okay, so factors that affect resistance. Firstly, the length. Okay, the longer the conductor, the longer the conductor, um, greater the resistance. Okay, it makes sense because the longer the wire, the, and actually this does come into play this year, the longer the wire, the longer the conductor, the greater the resistance because of the fact that there is a greater chance of loss of energy due to the fact that the electrons are traveling along. And this is especially true when you're talking about electricity being tra transported, for example, from the power plant like Kuberg to our houses, which is why they change the way they load those wires so that the overhead wires have got a huge voltage, huge. Um, you're talking like 200,000 to 2 million volts compared to the current, which is very, very small. And that reduces the resistance because the slower the electrons are traveling through the wire, the less the resistance. Next, the thickness. Okay, let's think of this, this makes sense. Okay, the thicker the wire, the thicker the wire, the lower the resistance. So I want you to think about um, traffic and talk about, think about three lane traffic versus, well that's two lane, three lane traffic, one, two, three, versus single lane traffic. So now if I have three lane traffic and I've got all the cars traveling along, yeah, that is cool, no problem. But then say that just as you get into town, they want to take this three lane traffic into single lane. Okay, single. So now we suddenly have to funnel all these people into the single lane. So what's going to happen? Obviously, there's going to be a huge traffic jam and the cars are going to be stopped for almost ever. Okay, so the idea, the idea here is to um, basically realize that the thicker the wire, the more it's like three lane or four lane traffic, and then you'd be going the opposite way and then you'd be to have greater flow of the electrons, okay, and smaller resistance. Okay, temperature. Now, temperature is interesting because one would think that an increase in temperature would decrease the resistance, um, but actually it's the other way around. An increase in temperature increases the resistance. Now, let me explain this to you. Um, I'm going to assume that we have got a very thin wire and it's only got one atom thick. Okay, it's only got one atom thick. Now, just to explain to you where I'm coming from, normally when you've got electricity traveling through, you've got the wire has got, now let me just redraw this, this is terrible. Actually, you know what, we can erase all of this. Okay, so metal, as you should know, is made up of atoms with what is called a C of delocalized electrons. So these atoms are all of the same type and therefore their outer energy levels are all at the same point, all at the same point, okay? And the same energy, right? So what would normally happen is the electrons, if you had a positive charge here and a negative charge here, the electrons would travel along here and through here and maybe up there, who cares? But the point is that they can easily travel along these orbitals that are all at the same energy level, okay? And that is why they're called the free sea of delocalized electrons. Now, the problem is, what, sorry, what you need to understand is that even though these particles look like that they're next to each other, these atoms look like they're next to each other, and they are next to each other, but they're vibrating. But it's fine, even though they're vibrating, they're vibrating on the spot, so they don't move out of where they are, okay? That is at normal temperatures. Now, what happens at higher temperatures is, is that these atoms start moving. So what you end up with is gaps, 
okay you might have a couple atoms next to each other and then some gaps and yeah you might have a gap here and because these atoms are now moving much faster and much further because an increase in temperature increases your average kinetic energy okay so therefore we can say that what is happening is that an increase in temperature is going to make the resistance greater because what's going to happen is the electrons might flow, let's say they flow along like this, okay? Now they get here. Now they can't transfer to the next atom until these atoms move together. So either this atom has to move over to the left or this atom has to move over to the right. And when they bump into each other, the electron can transfer and then maybe go la 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 and they get stuck again or whatever, okay? These might move apart. So the point is that the greater temperature causes these atoms to move apart and move together again, but there is greater gaps. So it is more difficult for these at electrons to move through. And that effectively is resistance. Resistance is the resistance to the flow of electrons okay of electrons and obviously the type of material i mean some things are just better at transferring electricity or trans um allowing electricity to flow through it for example wood is not really not a very good conductor of electricity whereas copper is an excellent conductor of electricity right so now we're going to talk about electric circuits and we're going to talk about set resistors in series so the best way for me to do this is to actually draw a circuit and explain it to you. So we're going to take a cell, okay, and we're going to take an ammeter, and we're going to take a resistor, we're going to call it R1. Now obviously resistors in series are resistors that are one after each other, okay? So I'm going to take three resistors, okay? And then I'm going to put another ammeter here. And I actually wanted to put yeah, an ammeter in between there as well. So let's put an ammeter here and then a resistor. Resistor two and an ammeter. We're gonna call this resistor two and resistor three. Okay, so what you need to understand about resistors in series is that they slow down the current, okay, while the current is going through them. But then once the current is finished going through them, the current is going to carry on traveling at its same speed. So you could almost think of this as a bunch of people that are trying to run around this circuit okay they're a team of people and they need to get from the battery back around this to the battery again in the fastest amount of time now the ammeter measures how quickly measures the rate of the flow in other words it measures how quickly the electrons are going through so Wherever you see the wire, there's no resistance. So this team of people who are running one after the other, okay, they are tied to each other by string around their waist, and they're running one after each other behind each other, are running along. La 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 la. Yeah, they get to the first resistor. It's like a first. It's an obstacle course, okay? So what's going to happen? They're going to go slower during the obstacle course, right? Then what's going to happen? They're going to speed up during the flat pit, right? Back to the same speed, assuming there's no energy loss. Then we gain to go slowly through resistor two, and then we're gonna speed up during this bit, and then we're gonna slowly through resistor three, and then we're gonna speed up again and go back to this point. Okay, so what do we know? We therefore know that ammeter one has to equal ammeter two, has to equal to ammeter three. Obviously, because this is a hypothetical example, and the people are super fit and they don't lose any energy as they after between before and after their little um, obstacle courses. So while they're on the flat ground, they are running as fast as they can. As also, what you need to realize is that this is a circuit diagram, which means that we're drawing it out flat to make it easier for us to see. In real life, this A1, this line here, might be much longer than this one over here. It doesn't matter. It's just to give you an idea of what exactly is going on in the order that it's happening. Okay, so in series, 
the current is always the same. A1 is equal to A2 equals A3. Now let's say that I put a voltmeter across here. Now remember what a voltmeter measures. A voltmeter measures potential difference. But remember that act, that actually stood for what? Potential energy difference potential energy difference okay so that is what's going on there that's a potential energy difference so potential energy difference between this point and this point is the maximum energy that these people will have to get around the circuit okay they are to are going to use this energy to get through these three resistors this stuff here is free flowing okay the wires yeah this Free flowing there's no resistance no energy is required to get around this okay but there is energy required to get through resistor one there is energy required to get through resistor two and there is energy required to get through resistor three so what we find in series circuits is that v1 plus v2 plus v3 has to equal the v total this being of course not the emf but the potential difference so the total voltage in a series circuit adds up to the total potential difference okay so that is a series circuit okay do you understand that right now so we say the current is the same at every point on the circuit the voltage is divided across the resistors and the resistors are therefore called potential dividers okay so v total is v1 plus v2 plus whatever another thing that i need to tell you about is obviously since the resistors are in series and they all use up in total all the voltage the total resistance of this is considered to be r1 plus r2 plus r3 it makes sense because every single one of these people have to go through every single resistor they can't skip one they can't go oh look i think i'll just go there no they have to go around the circuit so they're going through every single resistor so the total resistance is equal to the sum of all the resistances right now let's talk about resistors in parallel okay so yeah, we've got one that's drawn, which makes life a little bit easier. Okay, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to make my life even easier and put a big voltmeter, I mean a battery here. Okay, so it's across there, right? And what I'm also going to do is I'm going to put some ammeters in. So I'm going to draw them in red, okay? So I'm going to put an ammeter here. Actually, you know what? I really hate this drawing. I'm going to draw it over here. I'm going to draw my own. Okay, so let's start again. So we've got... I thought I was making life easy for myself and not having so many drawings but to do. But in fact, that's a horrible drawing. Um, so I'm just going to draw my own. It's fine. We only need two. Right. Oops, yeah, I forgot one. Okay, so we're gonna go up. Ammeter. Right. Ammeter one, ammeter two, ammeter three, ammeter four. And we're gonna call this R1 and R2. Okay, so what I want you to assume for this example is that R1 equals R2. There's another thing I want you to realize. If you ignore the ammeters, the way the circuit actually works is this. The current comes, or the team of people, whatever, come along. La, 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 la. At this point, there's a junction. Okay, at the, if you had to draw it from this point of view, it actually goes like this. This, then there's an ammeter A2 and the resistor R1. And there's ammeter A3 and resistor R2 and then they join up and carry on. So even though this looks like it's way longer than this branch here, it actually looks like this, okay? So if you want to think about it like that then, and you want to think again that, let's pretend that these people, I'm going to make the four in a team, all four of them are trying to get back their group, they've been timed as a group, and they're trying to get back to this 
storage unit of the battery and the shortest amount of time and the least amount of energy. Okay, so what's going to happen is all four of them are going to be running at the same time and they're going to get to this point. So yeah, we've got four dudes. We've got one, two, three, and four. Now, if these resistors are equal in size, then what would you do if you were the team leader? Surely that what you would do is you would send two of these people up this way and two of the people down this way, okay? And because this is the ideal world, they're going to run at exactly the same rate at exactly the same time. So they're going to get to this point at exactly the same time and then they're going to rejoin, okay? So there they are running away again and getting back. So this point here is this point here, right? And that point there is this point here. So what that means is that if we start here, if these resistors are the same, I start here with four amps, okay? When I get here, what's gonna happen is the current is gonna split, okay? And if, like I said, if resistance one equals resistance two, this is gonna split equally, and we're gonna end up with two amps here and two amps here. Then it gets back here, and then all of them come together, and again, it is four amps, and then they go back around the circuit. Okay, so let's just keep assuming that these are the same for the minute, and let's talk about voltmeters. Now remember that voltmeters measure the energy required to get through the circuit, for example. So this voltmeter is measuring the potential difference. It's the energy required to get through the circuit. Now think about it. That is volts equals W over Q. It's the work done per unit charge. The work done per unit charge. So in other words, it's the work done by this dude. All the work done by this dude. All the work done by this dude. All the work done by that dude. It's the same for everybody, okay? So, as we get to this point, okay, do you agree that two of them are gonna go this way and two of them are gonna go this way? So in other words, if I had to group them, let's group the first group. They're gonna do this circuit. They're gonna go along here. They're gonna go along here through resistance one, okay, and then back. Green dudes, aliens, green dudes are going to go la 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 and up again. So do you see that both teams are only going through a single resistor, okay? The purple team is going along here, okay, and out. And the green team are going along yeah, and out. Okay, so that means that if I had to measure the amount of energy required for these guys to get across here, and I had to measure the amount of energy for these guys to get across here, it would be the same. And it would also be the same as the amount of energy required by these guys to get around the circuit, because it's all the same. Okay, so therefore, in a series, in a parallel circuit, we can say that V1 is equal to V2 is equal to V total, okay? And we can say that A1 is equal to A2 plus A3, which equals A4. In other words, a parallel circuit is a current divider, a current divider, whereas a series circuit is a potential divider. Okay, now last thing you need to know, and then we'll talk about if these resistors are different, is if we want to, if you want to think about this, okay, we need to talk about the resistance, we need to talk about how you work it out. And I'm just going to tell you that 1 over R total is equal to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus whatever resistors there are, okay, if there are more. So the reason for this is the fact, okay, which if you've got two resistors in parallel becomes R2 plus R1 over R1, R2. Okay, it's just basic math. So it only works if you've only got two resistors, okay? So the reason for this is again talking about the traffic, okay? If I've got single lane traffic, in other words, I don't have this bottom half, Okay, let's pretend the bottom half doesn't exist. Now I have to try and do this. Let's pretend the bottom half doesn't exist. Okay, 
do you agree that the current, all these four people, have to go all the way through here? Okay, do you agree? But now, if I say, hang on, let's open up this road. Do you agree that now there's a second lane that the people can go through, which means they can split. Some of them can go up here and some can go up here. So what happens is the more resistors we have in parallel, the smaller the resistance. Okay, I'm going to write that down. Whoopsie, what did I just do? Now yeah, maybe, yeah. Okay, the more resistors in parallel, the smaller the resistance, the smaller the resistance. Okay, more resistance in parallel, the smaller the resistance. So, that means, and this is the rule that they give you on the formula sheet. One over RT is equal to one over R1 plus one over R2. They don't tell you it's for parallel circuits. You need to know that it's for parallel circuits. Oh wait, my mistake, they actually do tell us for parallel circuits. Wow, you're given a lot. Okay, right. So now that's what happens if these are the same. Now let's just talk for a minute. And all this, the rules are true. Everything that I've said is true um, for any circumstance except for the current if these are different. So in fact, you know what? I'm just going to erase the link. Let's start again. If, however, and I'm just going to show you this bit. Let's say, for example, we have a resistor here, which is 2 ohms. And we've got a resistor here, which is 6 ohms. No, let's make it 4 ohms. 4 ohms. Okay, it doesn't matter really. Okay, and let's say, just to make it easy for us, we have got six people in our team. Just to make it easy, now we make it three people. Three people in our team. Three people in our team. Okay, now they all equally as fit, all equally as strong, etc., etc. Now I say to you, we want to get through to this point as a team, we want to get through to this point at the same time, and we want to do it. Um, as fast as possible, okay? So what are we going to do? We've got this 2 ohm resistor, which is half as small as this 4 ohm resistor, okay? So do you agree that the ratio of this resistance is 2 to 4, which can be written as 1 to 2, okay? So do you agree that the best way for me to think about doing this is I would send one guy through this, okay? And I would send two people through this, okay? Because one guy will be going through the form resistor, so only one guy is gonna go through the more difficult resistor to get through, whereas two people are gonna have to go through this, okay? So now what happens is, that if you notice this, this is the ratio of one to two, but if you look, this is the current, right? These are the resistance. The current is opposite. It's two to one. So if we look at this being the resistance and this being the current, do you see that it's an opposite? It's the same ratio, but it's opposite, okay? So let's pretend, for example, that we had... Um, let's make this, just let's make it a little bit more complicated just so that you can understand where this ratio thing comes in. Let's pretend that we have got, okay, three, and we've got five, P no, that's not really going to make it more difficult. Okay, let's do it anyway. Okay, five, five amps coming in. Okay, and we got two ohms and three ohms. Okay, I'm hoping that by just explaining that, you would have thought, well, okay, in that case, I'm going to send three amps through here and two amps through here. And you'd be perfectly correct because what you want to do is send more current through the smaller resistor and less current through the bigger resistor. And what it is, is an inverse pro rata, okay, it's, you take this ratio and you swap it over and then that's the amount of current that goes through it. Okay, another way to think about this is that, remember I said to you that the voltage is the amount of energy per charge, per unit charge, okay, so V is equal to IR, okay, we've learned that, 
um, and I will talk about Ohm's law again, but just let me show it to you in this bit. So if I had to work out the volts for this, it would be 2 times 3 is 6. And if I had to work out the volts for this, it would be 2 times 3 is 6. So you can see by doing this that the voltage is the same across the parallel circuit. So if you struggle to understand this reverse pro rata, you can just use Ohm's law and I will give you examples of this. Okay, so what did we learn? We learned that the voltage is constant across resistors in parallel. The current is split. Resistors in parallel are current dividers. And the more resistors in parallel, the smaller the resistance, and that's the formula for it. We also showed you about the two resistors in parallel as product over some, okay, that's a really silly way of thinking about it. Okay, think about this. It's RP is one over R1 plus one over R2. Common denominator is R1, R2, okay? Um, but this is one over RP, please note. So then you've got R1 goes into this and gives you R2 plus R1, but this is 1 over RP, so you need to flip it. Therefore, R parallel is R1, R2 over R1 plus R2. Okay, fine. It might be easier for you to learn product over sum than to work this out using maths. Um, but I do worry that just by memorizing this, if you make a mistake, you, you end up with... Um, a silly mistake just because you've incorrectly memorized it and you could actually work it out using maths. Okay, so Ohm's law is very basic. It says if a resistor is at a constant temperature, the ratio of V over I is constant, and that's called resistance. So basically what we're saying is for an ohmic conductor, for something that obeys Ohm's law, at a constant temperature, the resistance of the conductor is constant, and it's independent of the voltage and of the current passed through it. Okay, so what we're really saying is that R is equal to V over I. That is Ohm's law. Non-ohmic conductors are ones that do not obey Ohm's law. So ohmic conductors obey Ohm's law. Um, for example, your circuit resistors and necrom wire. Non-ohmic resistors are those that do not obey Ohm's law. And we spoke about this yesterday, and I said it's those ones that change temperature. For example, a light bulb. So the tungsten filament in the light bulb is a non-ohmic resistor. Okay. Um, so typical graphs, if you have, this would be an ohmic for an ohmic resistor, this is obviously for, oh, it says it there, non-ohmic conductor. So you will notice that it is not a straight line. And grade 12, sometimes they're quite mean in the final exams. They might ask you to plot um, I versus V and you think you're going to get a nice straight line and then you're going to work out the resistance using the gradient, etc, etc. And then it looks like the graph on the right hand side and you think what the heck and what you really have is a non-ohmic conductor. So don't panic if you end up with a graph like this, especially when they say to you, how can we tell that this is a non-ohmic conductor? And then you can say, well, it's not a straight line graph. Right, now let's talk about batteries and internal resistance. Now we've already spoken about the following. We've spoken about EMF, which is the maximum voltage a cell can supply, supply a circuit. That's interesting. A circuit. Okay, sorry about that. Potential difference is the voltage actually supplied to the circuit. Last volts is the EMF minus the potential difference, okay? Remember I said to you, we did this. I said to you that if you had, uh, let's say one resistor and we had an open switch and we had a voltmeter across here, this voltmeter might read, for example, six volts, okay? We close the switch and the voltmeter goes down to say, for example, 4.5 volts, just for example. So what has happened is this six volts is the EMF. It's the maximum voltage a cell can supply a circuit, okay? But when we close the circuit, the current flows around the circuit, okay? And when the current flows around the circuit, what happens is we get internal resistance in the cells and that reduces the amount of voltage that can actually be supplied to the circuit down to what might be, what 
might be it might be 4.5 it might be 5.8 i don't know i'm just making numbers up at this point okay and that is the potential difference the last vault okay these last vaults is the emf minus potential difference oh my word i don't know what i was doing last night so the internal resistance is the cause of the last vaults so now let's talk about load versus internal resistance okay the load is the definition is the external resistance in the circuit is referred to as a load okay now listen it's not often referred to as a load okay most often they will say what is the external resistance of the circuit um but somebody might go around and say what is the load of the circuit in which case you need to know that they're referring to the load it is represented by a big r Okay, therefore the volts, the V load is equal to IR. Okay, it makes sense. We know that R is equal to V over I, therefore V is equal to IR. So for the V load is going to be I multiplied by, and this obviously is the potential difference. The potential difference is the volts actually applied to the circuit. The internal resistance is represented by R. Okay, so the V internal resistance is IR. Okay, so if I really wanted to, I guess EMF is equal to V load plus V internal resistance. Okay, but what the actual equation becomes is E or EMF is equal to V plus IR, where this is the or I big R plus the R or IR plus I little r, where this is the volts that is supplied to the circuit and this is the last volt. So this would be equal to V external plus V last. All different ways that your teachers might write it. Okay, so let's look at an example. It says determine the internal resistance of a battery that has an EMF of 12 volts, has a potential difference across its terminals of 10 volts, when a current of four amps is thrown, flowing through a battery when connected in circuit. Okay, now grade 12, let's get real. Chances are you're getting something this easy, like stated like this, and exams is null. But we need to start somewhere. So let's just make sure you know where all the bits fall, and then we'll start looking at all the exam paper questions. So they're telling us the EMF is 12. They tell us that the potential difference, which is V, is 10. They told us that I is 4 and they want little r. So that's pretty easy. We've got 12 equals 10 plus 4r. So 2 is equal to 4r. So r is going to be 0.5 ohms. 0.5 ohms. Right. Now let's do a couple of examples. The best way to get started is to do examples. So we're going to start with the really easy examples and then we're going to move to more complicated examples. Okay, so this says consider the circuit drawn in below and answer the question. So you can see that there's no internal resistance in this question. It's pretty simple. It says V1 is 6 volts. Okay, V2 is 4 volts. Okay, A1 is 0,5 amps, 0,5. A2 is 1,5 and it says calculate the readings on R1, R2, A3 and R3. Okay, do you agree that we said the voltage in a parallel circuit is always equal? Okay, in other words, normally I would say that all the volts here would be equal to all the volts here. But what has happened is we've used 4 volts to get through this resistor. So how many volts are left? Do you agree that there are two volts left? So if I put a voltmeter across here, it would read two volts. And similarly, if I put a voltmeter across here, it would read two volts, because that's how many volts are left for these electrons. Electrons are coming along here, la 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 la, come through here, four, use up four volts of the energy, la 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 la. And then what have they got left? They just got two volts of energy left to get through each of their halves and get back to the station. Okay, so R1 is going to be got as we know that V is equal to IR. Therefore, R1 is equal to V over I. The volt in this case is 2 
over the current, which is 0, 5. So it's 2 divided by half is going to be 4. Let's try again, 4 ohms. So R1 is 4 ohms. Okay, now they want us... Uh, Sorry about that, we're just trying to get you back up. Okay, I think we, Candice Rennie is in another call. Well, no, I'm not. Um, okay, no, simply to reconnect. Right, I apologize for that. I don't quite know what's going on with Skype, but let's just carry on. So where were we? Okay, so now we've worked that that is four ohms. So there are two ways that we can get R2. The one way is to do exactly the same as what we just did with this method. We could say, well, we, we could say, well, well, we have that this is 1.5 volts amps and this is 2 volts so again we could go r is equal to 2 divided by 3 over 2 effectively one and a half which is 2 times by 2 over 3 which is going to be 4 and a third am i right divide by 3 over 2 you tip in times becomes yeah it's 4 and a third okay that is one way of doing it the other way of doing it is to realize 4,3. Okay, the other way to do this is to realize that, sorry, is to realize that this current is being split. And if this is 0 0.5 amps, okay, so it's been split on a ratio, I'll show you. The ratio is 0 0.5 to 1,5. So do you agree that this ratio is actually Hmm. This ratio is actually one to three. One to three. Okay. So what does that mean? It means that three times more current is going to be going through here, which means this resistor needs to be three times smaller. Oh, that's what's wrong with this. It's four over three. So therefore, this is going to be four over three, which equals one and a third ohms. Okay, so there are two different ways that you can do that, okay? And it really doesn't matter which way you do it as long as you get the answer. Okay, now what do they want? So we've got R2, we've got R1, we now want A3. Okay, well A3 is actually quite easy because of the fact that 
it told us that A1 over here is 0, 0,5 and A2 over here is 1, 1,5. So what do we know? We know that when they get back together, they add up to become 2 amps. Okay. And finally, R3, well, if we know that the current through this main circuit is 2 amps, then R3 can be got because we know that V is equal to IR. Therefore, R is equal to V over I. The voltage over here is 4. The current is what is 2. Therefore, the resistance is going to be 2 ohms. So that R3 is 2 ohms. Okay, so that was really just practice in working your way around the circuit. So tomorrow, we are going to start with much more complicated electric circuits. Grade 12s, have a wonderful evening, and I hope to speak to you tomorrow. Cheers.